Here's how to recognize brainwashing conditions. Welcome to Critical Thinking Skin, where we look at how you can think about any faith-challenging message and arrive at a biblical, logical conclusion yourself. I'm Patricia Engler, and today let's look at some hallmarks of extreme one-sided indoctrination, sometimes called brainwashing, so that you can recognize versions of brainwashing in culture and resist it with biblical, critical thinking. Robert Lifton, the psychiatrist who first described the so-called brainwashing or thought reform process after interviewing prisoners of the Korean War, suggested in 1961 that brainwashing environments often involve eight features. Number one, milieu control, or censorship of what information people can access, communicate, and even think about. This ensures that people only hear one side of the story and only encounter facts interpreted through a certain lens. You can probably think of some examples. And given the observational support for creation, you can explore through the linked resources. One example might be the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe's Resolution 1850, which urged nations to firmly oppose the presentation of creationist ideas in any discipline other than religion and to promote the teaching of evolution as a fundamental scientific theory in the school curriculums. Second is something that Lifton called mystical manipulation, where indoctrinators, typically convinced they're serving some higher purpose, use whatever means necessary to manipulate others' emotions and behaviors without necessarily looking like it. As Lifton wrote, one is asked to accept these manipulations on a basis of ultimate trust or faith. Third is a demand for purity, where indoctrinators define the pure or good as everything within their ideology and the impure or bad as everything outside their ideology. They reinterpret morality this way, claiming, as Lifton observed, that anything done to anyone in the name of this purity is ultimately moral, including violently exterminating everything deemed impure. This creates what Lifton called a narrow world of guilt and shame, both of which emotions can be exploited for further manipulation. Now, some may suggest this happens in churches. And while in certain cases, like cults, that unfortunately may be accurate, episode 87 explains why Bible-based apologetics teaching churches do not brainwash, much less humanly redefine morality, which episode 61 explains is founded in God's character. Fourth is a cult of confession, where indoctrinators create a culture obsessed with confessing breaches of this idealized purity, including the forced confession of crimes never committed. Fifth is what Lifton dubbed the sacred science, the human ideology promoted as the indisputable and questionable truth. Lifton writes, The ultimate moral vision becomes an ultimate science and the man who dares to criticize it, or to harbor even unspoken alternative ideas, becomes not only immoral, but also irreverent. He adds, The assumption here is not so much that man can be God, but rather that man's ideas can be God. Well, that sounds like something Answers in Genesis has warned about for years, setting human reasoning above God's word as the ultimate authority for society's thinking. Sixth is loaded language, or cliches that promote the sacred science and silence argument. The example of loaded language that Lifton gave is labeling anyone who agrees with indoctrinators' agenda progressive and anyone who disagrees oppressive. This involves some of the propaganda techniques discussed back in episode 9. Seventh is placing doctrine over person, which happens when preserving a group's sacred science grows so important that if any member personally observes or experiences something that doesn't fit that ideology, those experiences are either dismissed or reinterpreted to fit the sacred science. For example, Dr. Jerry Bergman's book, Slaughter of the Dissidents, documents how frequently scholars who question evolution have lost positions or been denied degrees. Finally, eighth is the dispensation of existence, where indoctrinators decide which people count as real persons with human rights and which don't, often based on the extents to which people agree with the indoctrinator's agenda. Again, this is one logical extension of making human's word the authority for truth, including the truth about what it means to be human. So those are criteria that Lifton proposed nearly 50 years ago for identifying brainwashing environments. My point in sharing them is not to encourage conspiracy theories which promote unsupported conjectures as probably true, 
but to equip critical thinkers who can recognize indoctrination and think through information logically and biblically rather than absorbing questionable messages. We'll look closer at how to recognize one-sided indoctrination next time. Meanwhile, for more on how to think critically about any face-challenging message, you can access my other CT Scan episodes packed with tactics, tips, and tools that helped me as a Christian student at Secular University. Thank you for watching. Hey, it's Patricia. Just wanted to let you know that if you like these videos, a free, easy way to help Answers in Genesis Canada produce more content and equip more people to defend their faith is to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, click the bell, and of course share these resources. I know you might hear that kind of thing a lot, but the reason these actions are so important is they inform social media algorithms to help these videos reach more people who can benefit from them. And that's especially helpful because advertising is super expensive, but this way, even media platforms which are often unfriendly towards biblical content become tools to promote gospel outreach for free. And if you're on board to share this message of biblical authority and want to give, you can also make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking the link below. Thank you so much.